Okay, you guys, so I trust everybody's doing really well. The purpose of this video is to show my gym program, which is helping me get back into full training, A, from a recovery perspective, and B, from a building the robustness and the strength to avoid injury, to be able to handle a certain amount of training. So everybody has like a probably a natural limit to how much they can train before they break down or get injured. And it's really important to realize that to achieve maybe the best result you've ever achieved, a better result than you've ever achieved before, then you might need to build some strength and robustness in the gym to allow you to recover from the training that you need to do to achieve that big goal better. That's a long way of saying, if you're not in the gym and you're not doing some strength work or some recovery work, you're likely not training at the amount that you could be if you were. So start doing some. So I've done a steady run. I've been rebuilding back after the Dublin Marathon. I've been up in Flagstaff at altitude, getting back into training, but in a way that allows my body to get back into it without getting injured. I've been in the gym almost every day, doing some form of either recovery, strength building, some weights to recondition the body to handle training. What I'm gonna do is watch on the iPad the session that I've done and talk you through doing it for yourself. So you guys will watch bits of this session or all of it, and I'm kinda of gonna talk you through why I'm doing it, how it helps, what to sort of look at on your technique, and why you should basically just get to the bloody gym and start doing some of this stuff. So let's crack on. So I get in the gym and, and I start with some rolling of the feet to sort of loosen up that like plantar area. And this is kind of part of the recovery protocol. So you're gonna go in the gym, you can do some of this like foot rolling, and then this is kind of like, if you get like tight calves, sometimes even tight hamstrings, it can all be coming from the big toe and underneath the arch of the foot. So this is a really good starting point. And then you can move into another bit of a recovery routine where I'm not gonna go through the full foam rolling routine that I did this day, but I'm targeting those muscles that I know post-marathon recovery period, as I get back into the training, bottom parts of the Achilles, sort of the soleus area, the calves, the hamstrings, the quads, the areas that I know and perhaps you know about your body that you need to keep on top of. This also kind of acts as a bit of a warm-up routine before you start the actual gym stuff, that low-level gym stuff that will help, like I said, build that robustness. But it helps as a recovery to start with some stretches, start with some foam rolling, and get yourself nice and loosened up before you begin the gym. So post-marathon, you're gonna be all tense. In fact, take that away. Runners in general are super tense. We're always tense, right? Some tension is a good thing. That helps you be responsive off the ground, but often you don't want that level of tension because it becomes a little bit too much. So now that I've done a little bit of rolling, which can release some of that tension, and I'm now moving into what is like a runner's yoga routine where I'm working on, again, those main muscle groups. Calves, now I'm into sort of like glutes. Every time I come back up into what seems like a sort of yoga downward dog, again, we're looking at our calves, we're looking at the backs of our hamstrings, our hips. This is a routine that doesn't take a super long time. And if you want me to upload the full routine that you could go through, then I'll do that, you can comment below. But it's a routine that's gonna open those parts of the body up, but it's also gonna help you see perhaps which parts of your body are tight and perhaps they need attention. So you're looking at me here, I can barely even get into some of these poses. And that's because post-marathon recovery period, the body can get pretty tense. The minute you start training again, it can tense it, like tighten up, sorry, even more. So this entire routine, hamstrings, hips, glutes, calves, it's enough that if you're doing it on a probably three to four times a week and you're probably distributing maybe 10 to 15 minutes of your day to do this, you're gonna help the body get through the training without becoming stiffer and stiffer, which is what can lead to some injuries. So all you're looking to do really is maintain the flexibility that you've got and not let the training constantly beat you down. Now we're moving into some gym. So 
calf walks up nice and tall with the chest high and you're up on the balls of your feet. Then you move into some heel walks, which you're, you're walking along on your heels with your shins, like your, your feet are pointed up in that sort of like dorsiflexion, and that's gonna help those shin muscles. Anybody that's training in super shoes, we're loading our tendons, our calves, our balance muscles, our muscles along the shin, we're loading them way more than usual. And so this kind of a routine of some calf loading, loading those shins a bit, it's helping support those muscles through the training. It's not super intense gym, but it's very helpful. The active calf walks, keep yourself up nice and tall, keep the calf fully locked, but plant down on the feet. Now we're in some calf raises. So we're gonna do probably like two sets of these, eight reps per side, and you're, as you can see, we're dropping below the center and all the way up to the top. I'm probably rushing these a little bit, so you can take your time a little bit more with it. I've moved from single leg to double leg, and you can see that I've slowed the rhythm down, likely because I'm finding double leg easier than single leg, so I'm not rushing this process. The calf is the first part of the body to smash the ground. Oh, okay, the foot. Foot hits the ground, calf comes into contraction. You need strong calves. Now we're gonna move into some isometric calf loading. I'm not sure if you'll have seen this before, but if you think of running, a lot of the contractions are more of a hold than they are like a, a bang, you know? And so isometric calf holds, I've gone on the leg press machine. I think I'm sitting here at about 60 to 70 kilograms. And then I'm putting my foot in the middle of the machine and I hold it in that, I can feel it all along my soleus. I hold that for anything from like six to 10 seconds. And I do that for 60 seconds. So it's kind of three on each side, depending on how long I do. Two to three sets. Now we're moving into different loads. We're not doing the calves anymore. So this is a slightly longer lever glute bridge than normal, which is bringing the hamstring into it a bit more. You, you can see me actually tighten this up a little bit. Keep the pelvis in a good position. Make sure the lower back is flat when you reset. And you're bringing yourself up to the point of you can keep that pelvis in a good place. I'm holding for four to six seconds and then I come down, switch legs, go again. I'd recommend two to three sets, probably five to six reps each set and four to five second holds. A doctor side plank. <laughs> so a doctor side plank, very, very good for the adductors. Be very careful with the adductors. I do 15 seconds. You could perhaps start with four to five. Then I've moved into the opposite side of the hip. And now we're doing, I do eight of these reps with the knee drive. So we're still in that side plank, but we've got the knee drive and it's the opposite side of the hip that's kind of being worked than the adductor. Reset your glute bridge, that's really getting that pelvis tucked under, and then you're doing some hamstring walkouts. Hamstring walkouts are isolating the hamstrings, and be careful to go only out as far as you can hold that secure position, then completely reset, don't walk back in, and get that pelvis tucked under again, up into your glute bridge, and then do your hamstring walkout. Okay, my technique in these is terrible, but that's because the gym was quite busy and I was trying to find places that I could film, but ignore technique a little bit. I'm shaky, I'm all over the place, the box isn't that stable on the grass, but this is like hip, like raises I would call it, but I often get tight on the outside of the hip and basically you're going below baseline with one side of the hip and then you're coming up above the baseline and it's really targeting the outside hip and it gets it a lot stronger to just handle your running stride. Okay so now we're going to do some lunges. <laughs> very very good exercise. As you can see I'm not using weights yet I'm now back to week three in the gym and I'm doing a little bit of weights, but this was week one and two. And so get yourself into the lunge position, tuck the pelvis under, and what we're looking to do is not move the front knee. I'm actually gonna watch myself now to see if I do it, but you don't want the front knee to come over the, your foot. You want the movement to be, I'm actually doing pretty good here. So pelvis in a good position, chest up nice and tall, head looking forward, and you want to move the back side of the body, not your knee over your foot. So it's an up and down movement, not a forward and backwards movement. Some glute um, raises. <laughs> so my technique's terrible in this. This is a soft box and it's not good. And again, I'm mumbling. So 
get yourself into the position of flat foot on the top of the box and flat foot on the back of the box. Then only use the raised leg. Bring yourself up, you'll feel that glute tensing, it'll come up to a high position, and then slowly raise back down. So it's all kinda, you're not rushing this, you've got yourself flat, then you're raising up, take your time, slow it back down. If you find yourself struggling with this, lower the box a little bit, but again, you're looking at two to three sets, maybe five to six reps. Super, super important that you're careful with your technique when you're doing all this kind of work, because essentially the, the rhythm technique and movements that you start repeating consistently in the gym, well, that's what you're gonna be repeating outside. And so when you've watched my other videos and I do the drills and the warm up stuff, I'm doing that consistently two to three times a week so that my body naturally picks up a better running technique. So it's almost like they say, like driving a car. The more you do this kind of work, this basic gym stuff, it teaches the body good movement patterns, but maybe you'll have to record yourself in the gym or just keep an eye on where your technique's at because maybe that's what's gonna to lead to better technique when you're out there running, stronger technique when you're out there running and you'll recover better. That's it from my sort of like gym recovery protocol. I'll do that for two to three weeks and then I can start to introduce weights again, like actual weights and I have other gym videos that I've uploaded where I'm loading the body a bit more. But this is really important before you start loading the body even more with weights. Make sure that your gym is adding to your training, helping your training and not hindering and making you too tired or getting injuries because of tiredness. In other words, don't rush the gym do it in a way that your body can handle. There's loads more gym stuff. I just talked about warm up routines, plyometrics, running technique tips. It's all on the running masterclass at joggingroom.com. There's 60 lectures, 12 hours of tips, way more videos than this, but this idea, this style to help educate and teach runners how to be better, what to do, and how to basically make the most out of the, your, your time that you're dedicating to training. It's all about building the body to be able to handle the most training at the best intensity to achieve some big results. Big results come when you're able to do the training and stay healthy and consistent, and then you achieve something that probably you never thought you were able to achieve. I think a lot of people get injured maybe when they do 40 mile, maybe when they do a double day, maybe when they bring in some intensity, and it's not that you can never do that, it's that you can't right now, but by adding in some of this work, you'll be able to in future. An injury is not a disaster. It's knowledge that you need to change something, strengthen something, work on something to be able to train more or at a better intensity that can get you the results that you want. I hope you enjoyed that. Like, subscribe, comment below if you enjoyed that. If you want any more tips, video recommendations, whatever you gotta do, do those lovely things. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, and take care.